is the third and last appointment of the series of meetings of Xilexpo Digital in collaboration with DAGRI. We're going to talk about the complex interaction between wood and humidity with Professor Marco Toni and Professor Paola Mazzanti from the University of Florence. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marco Toni. I'm an associate professor of wood technology at DAGRI, University of Florence. Today we're going to talk about humidity and the love and hate between water and wood. For this lecture, we are now in one of the laboratories that we use in our department. Next to me, there are some wood samples that we use for our laboratory testing exercises to show students the um, biotic attacks that uh, wood suffers, but this is not today's focus. So love and hate between uh, water and wood. Why this title? There is no wood without water. You may let wood dry up for an endless amount of time, incredibly long, but inside wood as a material, there will always be a certain quantity of water, possibly even a small one, but there will always be some water. So there is no wood without water, except for um, artificial environments that are created in laboratories. And why hate if there is also love? Because almost all the times uh, we face a few problems with a wood item, with a structural element, with a wood panel. Well, most of the times, the problems are to be traced to water. Excessive water that was not supposed to be there, less water than expecting that has been eliminated due to too much drying, or similar situations. With today's activity, we'll try to clarify uh, the whereabouts of this relationship, love and hate. There is no wood without water, and therefore water accompanies wood ever since the very moment uh, wood is part of the tree in a forest until it becomes a finished product. Specifically, wood that is generated that is just been logged, there is a high amount of humidity, a rival humidity uh, of a so log goes up to 40%, 80%, sometimes even higher than 100%. There might be humidity levels that are even above that threshold. In the following processing steps, in order to carry on with uh, the processing of sown timber, it is important uh, to control humidity and reduce it uh, through different processes like wood drying process, uh, which is uh, performed in uh, drying cells, but also through the so-called natural uh, seasoning of timber and wood. Uh, all these operations need to be conducted uh, controlling uh, the uh, humidity of wood. This type of control can be carried out in different ways, uh, as we're going to see in a few minutes. Why is it important to determine humidity? Well, because if I carry on to join two pieces of timber without um, being aware of the actual humidity of the material, the risk is that uh, the uh, uh, gluing of the material of the product uh, um, is going to fail. I may still have a good joinery level of a wood-based panel, but if uh, the humidity is not correct, uh, the first time uh, um, there is drying in open air, my material could uh, uh, um, get ruined by creating some uh, cracks uh, and uh, fixtures uh, in a reversible way. This means that uh, in every single step of the manufacturing process, uh, we need to control humidity. This needs to be done 
also in case of appraisals that are uh, necessary to verify why a certain problem to a wood-based product has occurred. My colleague Paola Mazzanti will now explain to us a little bit better how we can proceed to estimate or determine humidity. Good morning, everyone. My name is Paola Mazzanti. I'm a wood technologist and I'm a fixed term researcher at University of Florence, specifically at Dagri. I would like to show what humidity is in wood. How do we measure humidity? How do we calculate it? Uh, humidity is a number that we need to know to uh, make all the other following considerations. So, Wood humidity is to be expressed uh, through a formula. U stands for humidity, and it is equal to the weight of the uh, timber piece, like this one, minus the weight of the wood piece after removing water in a ventilated oven. This difference needs to then be divided again by the same PO. And then we add uh, uh, 100 to achieve the percentage of humidity. This is the uh, standardized uh, uh, methodology to calculate humidity. Humidity can also be estimated by using some electrical tools, uh, as we're going to see in the lab. Here we are in the laboratory. We are going to see how to estimate uh, um, timber humidity in a very fast and helpful way through electrical hygrometers. Through these two tips, uh, I will uh, punch the wood. I can measure the resistance uh, of timber to the flow of electrical power between the two tips. Electrical resistance is a sign of the humidity in the timber. As humidity increases, the electrical resistance diminishes. This value can be directly read on the display of the device in terms of humidity percentage. Our piece of timber has a humidity of 10.5%. This uh, humidity value is suitable for all the uh, timber products that will be used indoor. I'm now going to show you another type of electrical hygrometer. This is a capacitive hygrometer. We use it to measure timber humidity without electrodes, but simply by uh, putting it on the surface of timber. We estimate uh, wood humidity, in this case, is 10.8%. The two measures are consistent, of course, and they are ideal to have a timber products for indoor use. We are now looking at another behavior of uh, the um, uh, water and uh, uh, timber relationship, uh, that's uh, um, the anhydrous uh, behavior, how wood defor deforms uh, depending on the presence of water. Let's take these two pieces of timber. They are um, completely plain, as you can see. One is actually a radial timber piece, uh, growth ringers uh, are vertical. The other one is a tangent one, and growth rings are horizontal. Therefore, we are going to uh, wet them into water and we'll see how their shape changes. Thank you, Professor Tony. So we now have a transparent drying um, device. Let's put the uh, timber pieces in it and we're going to fill it up with water. Here comes the water. Thank you for your help. We're going to dip the timber pieces into water. They need to be covered by water and they need to stay on the bottom surface. And of course, uh, they are now floating. So we'll have to use a metal plate to keep them on the bottom. 
so that they are soaking in water. Very well. Our samples are now dipped into water. We need to cover our dryer with a lid. And we will now connect it to a vacuum pump to speed up the process. Let's switch on the vacuum pump. If everything goes well, we are now creating vacuum inside the dryer. This allows us to remove all the air that is inside the wood, the timber. And maybe you can spot a few bubbles. The water creates some bubbles and that's air coming out. At this point, air has been removed from the environment. Let's switch off the vacuum pump. The container is now um, in a vacuum environment. We are now going to push some air into uh, the environment and air is going to push water inside the timber. By so doing, the timber samples will become wet. Air is going into the wood samples that were touching the plate are now on the bottom surface. This means that they got um, um, they received water. We are going to remove the lid and let's look at the effect. We will remove the timber samples from the container. Here they are. This is the uh, radial uh, sample, which was perfectly plain, and it still is. This is the tangent timber sample, and as you can see, it kind of cupped. And I can see it because as I move it on the, the um, edge of the laboratory table, I have this effect. Now we're going to make another experiment. Let's see what happens if I put some timber pieces in a glass. Let's put it inside. We've added some water so that the glass is dipped into water, horizontal or tilted. Let's put some weight on top of it. Otherwise, wood is not dipped into water, and this is the best setting. So our glass with timber pieces is completely into water. Let's take the lid and cover up. Let's close our dryer. Let's close the valve. And we will connect it to the vacuum pump to uh, speed up the process. Let's switch on the pump. We are now creating a vacuum environment inside. Air is coming out, as you can tell from the bubbles. So, Paola, I think the experiment was successful. Uh, the glass got broken. Yes, luckily. Why? So, what did the glass break? Well, the swelling of wood is such that it may lead to uh, some uh, rigid materials stresses, and uh, it can stress it so much that the material uh, breaks. So water 
leads to swelling of wood. The example with the glass uh, um, is something we use with our students to, sh to, to show them something real. But these things uh, happen also in, uh, uh, use in the use of timber. Whenever uh, timber swells and it's swelling, uh, uh, is uh, prevented from. In Carrara marble caves, for example, the blocks of marbles would be uh, opened and broken by creating some uh, holes and fixtures uh, in the wood, and then they would swell it with water. This was uh, the third and last contribution of the Agri Department at Xilex for Digital. Thank you for following us. Thank you to Archimala for entrusting us with this task. And let's meet at Xilex for halls. Dagri will be represented with all the others. I forgot something. These videos will be available on Xilex for Digital. Enjoy.